Okay, got it. Thank you. Commissioner Morris, will you lead us in the pledge to our flag, please? Ready? Come I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is it on? We're now at number three. My insurance. The agenda and the approval of the minutes of the April 24th, 2019 meeting. Mr. Chairman, I don't think your uh, microphone is on. It's on now. Uh, <clears throat> the approval of the minutes of, of the April 24th, 2019 meeting. I'll move approval. Second. Uh, uh, motion by uh, Commissioner Couch, uh, seconded by Commissioner Mello. Um, number four, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over, the on over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah, we need could, to be... could I, could I inter interrupt for just a minute? Yes. Since there's no public, public comment. Uh, I'm going to have to leave the meeting in about 15 minutes. I just wanted the commission to know that. I have okay. another meeting I have to go to that I checked with uh, the executive officer if it would be okay to leave that, leave the meeting early, and he thought it would be. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, do we need to record the vote for the, on the, the minutes? Vote, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Mello reminded me of that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, please cast our votes. Vote for the minutes. The minutes, yes. Motion approved, all ayes. Number five, commission items. A, public member appointments. Appointment of public member, public member alternate, and restricted public member alternate. Mr. Knox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, today you are continuing the process of appointing a new commissioner to the public member seat, a public member alternate, and we still have the restricted public member alternate seat open. To fill the three seats, we have three candidates. While all three have expressed that they are, would prefer to be appointed to the public member seat, all three have indicated they are willing to serve as an alternate. The three candidates are Stuart Bauer, Jose Gonzalez, and Vince Zaragoza. At the last meeting, the candidates introduced themselves and gave reasons why they would like to serve on LAFCO Commission. The commissioners were given the opportunity to ask questions. At that point, Commissioner Rivera asked for a continuance continuance, which brings us to, to today. The steps uh, for the election are as follows. Uh, it's actually an appointment, not an election. Uh, the chair will open the proceeding and has the discretion to ask for comments from the public and two uh, comments and questions from, uh, from the commissioners uh, of the candidates that they would like to. The chair will then ask for nominations for the public member seat Vote will be taking, excluding the current public member and restricted public member. The vote has, the major has to be a majority with at least one vote each of the appointing authorities. I read that to mean one vote from a supervisor, one vote from a city, and one vote from a special district. The Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act is silent on the vote of the other public member. As Kern County is the only commission to have two public members, I do not believe the scenario was contemplated when the law was written. I may be overly conservative to recommend that Commissioner Fowler nor Commissioner Mello should vote on the, as, on the public member seat. Okay. Once the vote is successful on the public member, the commission will move on to the two alternate positions. 
The public mem member alternate will require the same voting procedures as a public member. The restricted public member alternate will require a vote of only the two county supervisors and two special district commissioners. With that, I return that to the turn it to the chair. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'm going to ask a dumb question. Do we have two special di seated t tonight? We do not. So we can't, we can't do it then, right? We, we can't do it tonight. Is that correct? Well, we have, we, have one, we have one special district. We have one city and one county. So as long as all of them are unanimous, we can do it. Okay. I thought you said we needed two. We need one from each category. Okay. Thank you. So one, right now, we're just voting for one, right? For your, just the your, first? Your first vote will be for first the vote. public member who will replace uh, Commissioner Mello. But I'm a little bit uh, lost here, uh, excuse me, uh, is that uh, do we call for the name of each one? I don't have any names down here. Yeah, I do. I, may, may I, I, would it be appropriate for, for me to make a, a nomination? Sure. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. So. Okay, I'd, I'd like to nominate for the regular public member, Stuart Bauer. I'll second. I'll second that. Okay, uh, we have a uh, motion by uh, Commissioner Scribner and a second by Commissioner Couch, was it? Um, uh, please cast your votes. Well, I'm, wait a minute. Shouldn't we have I'm, a... I'm sorry. We have another problem. You have five commissioners up there, but only four of you can vote, which doesn't make you a quorum of the commission. You have enough of each category, but you don't have enough total. You need one more commissioner. And shouldn't I also ask if there's any other nomination, shouldn't I? You could. Yeah. Councillor, where are we at on this? If we take the two, two public members out, is that now a quorum with who's left? One, two, three, four, three, five. But she's not voting. Right. But since the two were down, down, down to seven, so four would be a quorum of seven. Four is a quorum, but we got nine. I know, but the two aren't, aren't part of the vote. I got seven. Yeah. We're working it out. <laughs> so we're getting creative here. Since the two public members can't vote, a quorum would be four of seven, mm -hmm. not five of nine. And my attorney seems to agree with me. I agree with that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we can move forward with this as a quorum of, of four, four of seven. Okay, we have one nomination. Are there any other nominations uh, by the, uh, uh, for the uh, um, public member uh, from any of the commissioners? If not, uh, let's cast our votes, please. This would be something to take up with our legislatures. <laughs> they left a gap in the law. Motion approved, all ayes. We're uh, now uh, down to the um, uh, call for a motion on public member alternate. Uh, do I have any nominations? Um, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Vince Zaragoza as the, um, the alternate public member. Any other nominations from the commission? I, I have a question about that nomination. The third, may I, Mr. Chairman? The third, uh, I'm happy to support that or second it. My question is, from the, do the candidates have to represent, well, these are all public members, nothing to do with, with uh, I retract my uh, question, which I never even got out of my mouth in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's pass our I'll second it. 
Is there a second? Oh, okay. Um, uh, the first, uh, first was com Commissioner Scrivener, second yeah. Commissioner Cow. Uh, please cast our votes. Motion approved, all ayes. The uh, third uh, appointment is a uh, call for motion on restricted public member, alternate. Uh, do I have any nominations? Move the nomination of Mr. Gonzalez. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Couch, second by Commissioner Scrivener. Um, please cast your votes. We have two supervisors in the special district, so we'll have three or four. Motion approved, all ayes. And we're num on to number B, um, committee assignments. Uh, policy and Budget Standing Committee made app a member appointments, two-year terms, appointed by the chair, uh, Mr. Knox. Uh, before I start, Mr. Bauer, would you like to join us on the dais? Doesn't seem right, Ginger. You're not in, in the right seat. Sorry. <laughs> oh crap! I guess I'm sitting here. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have the, I don't have the items. That's what I was looking for. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you scroll down a little bit? On April 24th, LAFCO meeting, Commissioner Rivera requested that the commission review the, the definition of substantially surrounded, a term that is critical in the annexation of an unincorporated island as presented in government's code section 56375.3. The discussion brought a recommendation that the policy committee be reconvened to investigate and provide a recommendation to the commission regarding the need for a definition an opinion on what the definition of substan substan substantially surrounded should be if needed. LAFCO staff has determined that a committee appointments are for two-year terms. Neither the policy nor budget committees have met for the last two years. New assignments need to be established. As the commission has no local policy in regards to uh, committee appointments, staff has located references, documents that authorize the uh, chairman to appoint committee members. Uh, each committee contains a maximum of four commissioners on a committee um, to prevent a quorum. Can't have more than four. Um, and so with that, uh, the chair has recommended on the policy committee, uh, Commissioner Couch representing the county, Commissioner Sanders representing special districts. Um, that's, that's not correct. I'm, at, I'm sorry. I went to the wrong one. Uh, uh, Willie Rivera representing cities and Barbara Fowler representing the public. Um, these appointments create a balance of one commissioner from each category and there is institutional knowledge and diversity of opinion. We also have a budget committee which also hasn't met in a number of years. Um, it is a standing committee so it's appropriate to actually uh, make, a, make appointments to that committee. So we are ready, ready when uh, necessary. Uh, the um, chairman appoints uh, uh, Commissioner Scribner from the county, uh, him, the chairman himself from special districts, uh, Commissioner McGuire from the city, and the new public member, Stewart, from um, the public member. Uh, the executive officer will work with these committees to find suitable days to hold a committee meeting. 
uh, provide an agenda and discussion of materials. So I'll be working on that here very soon. And that's my report on committee assignments. And I, as chair, make those appointments to those two committees? Yes. Okay. They're appointed. Um, first of all, well, first of all, let me back up. Is there any commissioners have any questions? Um, Actually, I have one that comes to mind. Since we just appointed some alternate public members, if the public member that's on a committee can't come to the committee meeting, does the alternate attend the committee meeting in their place? Or do you want to? I, I don't believe we have a policy on that, okay. but that is a logical progression of that. Okay. Technically, you could also have alternate members sitting on committees. Okay. But Thanks. you also can't go over four still. You would have right. to take a regular member off of a committee to do that. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Fowler. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could we have our two alternates come up and be introduced? Would the uh, two alternates please uh, come up and introduce themselves? Um, Commissioner McGibbons and fellow commissioners, thank you for the appointment. My name is Vince Saragosa, and I'm happy to serve as an alternate public member commissioner. Thank you, uh, commissioners. Uh, my name is Jose Gonzalez, and again, uh, I am happy to serve as well. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I will be providing them uh, with a ins instructional packet of being a commissioner. And I'm gonna sit down and meet with you sometime in the future and we can talk about current issues and things that we're working on so that you're up to speed. Sure. Okay, we're on to um, number six, notice of public hearings. A, 1737, City of Armand Municipal Services Review. Mr. Knox. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a report on both 1737 and 1740. That's the Municipal Service Review for City of Arvind and the Sphere of Influence Amendment. Uh, both of them are, t are the same project, uh, but we'll have two separate votes at the end. These items were originally brought to the Commission on, in December of 2018, but was continued several times so that the City and County could work out several required agreements. Not all the agreements are completed, but we are ready to move forward with these two items with a recommendation including conditions. I'll start with the Municipal Service Review. Uh, the MSR includes information on the services provided by the city. The city requested a sphere of influence amendment. A sphere of influence cannot be updated without a current Municipal Service Review. In, adopt, in, a, in adopting a Municipal Service Review, the Commission is required to make determinations in six different areas. growth and population, the location and characteristics, characteristics of any disadvantaged unincorporated community within or contiguous to the sphere of influence. In this case, that would be Edmondson Acres. Infrastructure needed and deficiencies, opportunities for sharing facilities, and evaluation of management efficiencies. The city has provided updated information and a narrative on each of these areas for review. In addition, there is inform information on several districts that provide municipal services within or adjacent to the city boundaries. The commission is required to adopt determinations for each of these areas of review. The determinations recommended for adoption by the commission can be found starting in section five. As far as the sphere of influence, uh, the city of Arvin has the smallest city boundary to sphere of influence ratio of any city in Kern County. And do you have the chart for that? Yeah, you need to switch it over. Yeah. 
So while she's bringing that up, that up, that chart up, Mr. Rice did analysis of each city's city limits uh, compared to their sphere of influence. Uh, as you'll see from the chart that's now on the board, Arvin has the smallest uh, sphere of influence compared to their city limits of any city in, in Kern County. Um, also on the low end uh, is California City, and I bring that up because just because you have a small sphere to city ratio doesn't mean you don't have room to grow. Cal City has plenty of room to grow, and I don't see in the near future a, 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 op a reason for them to need a sphere amendment. So there's more details you need to go into than just that. Um, the city of Arvin does have undeveloped land within the city limits, but according to the city, many of these properties are constrained by flooding issues. Two main factors are prevalent in expanding the sphere of uh, amendment. First is a new high school on the north side of the city. It is logical for the city to want to begin planning and develop around the school. This area also is adjacent to Edmondson Acres, a disadvantaged unincorporated community, which has also taken into the sphere. The second is the economic opportunity zone. If, and if we can bring up the map on that, should be the next item. So you, um, the right-hand side in color, you'll see uh, the city limits, uh, the sphere of influence, and in the shaded area, that is an opportu uh, economic opportunity zone. Um, this was uh, recently granted to them. Uh, the city has had an, uh, it should be noted that some of these properties are within the Williamson Act. The city has added an agricultural element to their general plan to possibly encourage a relationship with the cannabis in industry uh, within these opportunity zones. Uh, both the MSR and SOI meet CEQA requirements through a negative declaration. There are two conditions I'm asking for on this, I'm recommending on this um, item. First is the normal uh, indemnification agreement we have with each applicant. And the second is to require that a tax sharing agreement and a plan for providing fire service, uh, likely a new city county fire contract, and have a planning agreement adopted by the city, county, and LAFCO by the end of 2019 year. If these requirements are not met, the sphere of influence amendment will be terminated January 2nd, 2020. The city or county does have an option of requesting an extension if negotiations have been completed and the agencies are awaiting the completion of the notice, hearing, and adoption process. The County of Kern Planning Department has met with and discussed a sphere of influence amendment with the City of Arvin as required by law. Attached is a letter outlining the county's understanding of the agreement between the county and City of Arvin regarding the sphere of influence, influence amendment. The letter outlines specific conditions be placed by LAFCO on the sphere of influence amendment. These conditions are, one, a master tax agreement between the city and county, and two, an agreement for fire services be approved by both the county and city. These conditions conflict with LAFCO's authority under the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act and are inconsistent with commission policies. While important and well intended, these conditions can limit LAFCO commission's authority in a number of ways. While LAFCO staff encourages master tax agreements, they are not the only vehicle to equ equitable tax sharing. We occasionally have one-off tax agreements or limited tax agreements. These con the condition I'm recommended is vaguely worded tax sharing agreements. This can be a full master tax agreement or on the other end, an agreement to negotiate separate agreements for each, an each annexation. Uh, the commission is not looking to dictate to the city or county uh, how their master tax agreements are done, but we do need to know that they are being accomplished in order to move the sphere of influence uh, forward. Uh, the county's condition for a fire contract be adopted prior to offering support is, is a bit complicated. The county and city have a fire agreement signed in 2012 that runs through 2032 with an opportunity for each party to opt out every five years. A copy of that contract is in your agenda uh, packet. County planning has indicated that the contract has been terminated, but no termination letter has been provided. The city claims that they have not received a termination letter as dictated uh, in the 2012 agreement uh, contract, 
in our, under uh, the assumption that the contract is in place until a new agreement is reached. Both the city and county have confirmed that negotiations have been continuing for the last two years on a fire contract, but to date, no new fire agreement has been approved. Additionally, the county is in the process of, a process of contracting for a countywide fire rate study that is projected to be completed by the end, the end of the summer. This study would assist in identifying a fair and reasonable solution between the agencies. A fire agreement between the cities is beneficial, beneficial between agencies is beneficial, but it's beyond the scope of LAFCO to require a fire contract between a city and county. A city can contract with a county, they can form their own fire department, or contract with another provider. It is the city's choice of how to provide services, not LAFCO's. The city of Arvin does need to show a plan for providing fire service, whether through a contract with a county or by other means. That's why we're giving them the time to put that together. With these conditions, the city of Arvin can move forward with their plans for the area within the proposed sphere of influence, while allowing time to confirm the status of tax sharing and service was provided. And with that, um, Mr. Chairman, we'll need two votes, one on the municipal service review, and I recommend adoption by resolution, the updated municipal service review, including all the determinations and consider the negative declaration adopted by the city of Arvin. And the recommendation on the sphere of influence is to adopt by resolution, the sphere of influence as presented, including the notice of exemption adopted by the city of Arvin and conditions recommended by the executive officer. Do we have any com public comment? Uh, would anybody uh, from the public like to comment? Yes, I would. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity. And Tracy Leach, uh, representing Current okay. Citizens for Energy tonight. As most of you know, Current Citizens for Energy is a local coalition representing um, our industry, supporting our industry and the employees and the jobs and the many benefits that we we um, enjoy here in Kern County thanks to a robust oil and gas industry. Uh, we have concerns with Arvin's request for an expansion of the sphere of influence. Uh, there are mineral rights holders within the city of Arvin, but it's accessible currently from Kern County's jurisdiction. That would probably change significantly were this to be granted. Uh, again, we realize this is an early part of the process. And, uh, but we wanted to share those concerns with you. Uh, we, the industry is concerned with um, Arvin's history with respect to oil and gas production. Uh, unlike Kern County, which has a very vetted, environmentally sound oil and gas permitting structure, um, first in class permitting structure, um, uh, the ordinance passed by Arvin last year, the, many industry experts warned them not to pass that ordinance with an, uh, claiming an exemption from CEQA, but they did so anyhow. Our concern was that every permit pulled would result in a legal challenge, and that is what is happening today in the city of Arvin. So uh, making oil and gas production very difficult. And were that to spread, uh, of course all of us would suffer. Uh, Kern County's outstanding permitting structure allows production to occur and jobs and tax benefits to occur. So um, there's, there's concern and we just wanted to make sure you were aware of it. Um, we will continue to monitor this, this as it moves through the process and, and, a lot, and be happy to meet with staff again and discuss it or any of the commissioners. If you would like more detail on that, I'm happy to make um, industry representatives available to you as well. But I wanted to make sure you were aware of that concern and that um, uh, inability to potentially access minerals in the future. And, and I thank you for the opportunity to uh, comment. Thank you. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Ms. Leach, can I ask you a question? Are you speaking just to item A, or are you speaking to item B also? It would be the, um, ex ex the expansion of the sphere of influence um, specifically, but I understand they're partnered together, um, but it's, it's expanding the sphere of influence. Can I, can I try to summarize what I think you just said? And sure. Tell me if I get it. Um, the city of Arvin's ordinance regarding oil and gas operations <clears throat> exists only inside the city limits of Arvin. Correct. 
sphere of influence increase is the first step in increasing the city limits of, of the city limits mm -hmm. of Arvin, mm -hmm. and therefore that ordinance would ultimately, you believe, and or rightfully so, yeah. impact the area within the new sphere one day upon annexation. Correct. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Any further comment from the commissioners? We have someone from the public here. Chair, members of the commission, Jake Raper, R-A-P-E-R, -E city planner for city of Arvin. Uh, the ordinance that was referred to was adopted in July 2018. And of course, the, uh, the industry didn't, does not like the ordinance, nor do, do the residents. They didn't think it went far enough. Uh, but the city council felt it was a balance. It does provide opportunity for oil and gas exploration within uh, the city limits. And so uh, city council felt that the ordinance was uh, uh, an appropriate ordinance to be adopted by the city. Uh, as uh, Commissioner Couch had indicated, uh, that as long as the projects and the oil fields and mineral rights are within the county, they abide by county rules and regulations. Once it's annexed, uh, and through that annexation process, the property owners and all would be notified. As you know, it's a public hearing process. And so uh, st uh, staff, myself, representing the city of Arvin, Arvin is encouraging the commission to approve the city's request for the SOI. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to respond. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comment from the public? Any further comment from the commissioners? Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, let me ask, can I ask a question to staff? Could we move forward with item A and not item B at this time? And what's, what is the consequence of if we don't move forward with item B to the city of Army? Can we come back in a month or in two months if we wanted to on item B? You have that discretion to do that, yes. And you can separate the two. Is there any consequence to approving item A with regard to item B? You cannot approve item B without item A, Okay. but you can approve item A without item B. Okay, um, well, I'll make, I'd like to do this. I'd like to separate the two, if we could, and I'd like to make a motion to approve the staff's recommendation, is that adequate <coughs> wording, on item 6A, which is the municipal services review, and then come back to item B in a moment. That was the motion? Yes, sir. We're having a meeting next. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a uh, uh, motion from Commissioner Couch and a second from the new member. <laughs> Did we have um, discussion, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'm pretty, pretty confused, yes. Mr. Knox. I'm confused about this fire <coughs> issue. Are we being premature by doing this now? The, the county is still working on their The county and city are in disagreement on whether a current fire contract is in place. As a commission, Part of our job is to make sure that services can be provided. Um, without a contract, it's, it's up in the air of whether services can be provided or not. So my thought was, let them give them time to figure this out. And then during that, the city of Arvin can continue to go ahead and plan for this sphere. Uh, it, because it has been six months since we started, we first brought this to the commission and the city of Arvin requested that we bring it forward today. In my opinion, it's premature. I would recommend postponement. I know there's a motion on the floor, but I'll have to oppose it. May I ask a, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, may I ask a yes. question? Is that, is the, uh, the discussion of the fire issue, and I, I know a little bit about this, is that germane to item B, the sphere of influence amendment, or is that germane also to the municipal services review, which is the motion on the, on the floor? Uh, you can, it's definitely a B. Um, changing a sphere of influence without knowing 
that they can provide services is something that I'm not comfortable with uh, without giving them time in this case to prove it. Uh, the municipal service review does refer to the fire contract as how they provide services. So you could theoretically say that it is, okay. it does affect that as well. Okay, thank you. Let me give you the reasoning for the motion, but maybe you can, maybe I can be talked out of that. I was just, what I, what I read, it was a study on how to provide the services. And yes, it says you have to have a contract. The fact that there's, is there a contract or not, that fact is in dispute, is different from there needs to be a contract. And I was looking to make, uh, give Arvin, uh, at least recognize the work that they have done so far. Uh, but if you think A and B really belong together and need to go as a, as a couple and not individually, I, I can withdraw that, that motion. Approving item A really doesn't do anything for the city of Arvin without item B. That's what I thought. And it would just, in my opinion, it makes less work for the city of Arvin and for you if we move on with item. Are you you're comfortable approving item A? We can, but doesn't really provide anything additional for the city of Arvin. But you don't, you're not. I'm not opposed to it. Okay. Well, it's, I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward with that. If the commission decides they don't want to do that, that's fine. Item B is a separate issue entirely. Okay. Thank you. So your motion stands up. I have a motion. I have a second. And a second. Um, please cast your votes. Motion approved. Four yes, one no. Mr. Chairman, can I jump in on item B too? Now we're going to vote on number B. Okay, item I'd, B. I'd like to ask if we could, uh, as Supervisor Scribner said, there is a lot going on. We have a fire chief that's recently moved on to the state. We have a new interim fire chief. There's a dispute whether there's a fire contract in place or not. Um, we have the oil industry represented tonight that has concerns. I think it's appropriate, prudent of us to um, allow the county and the city time to sit down and see if they can work out some of those differences before we take action on that sphere of influence. So I'm going to ask that you give us, give the city and the county a month. Um, how long can we, for lack of a better term, drag this out before we cause problems for the city of Arvin? Their, their studies become stale or what have you. Right. The studies will be okay for several months. Um, one of the issues is uh, Jake is actually going to be stepping down from the city of Arvin, so they're gonna have a new planner in place that we're gonna have to educate all over again on this process. So this makes it more difficult for him to, <laughs> to step away. If I may chair members of the commission, Jake Raper, yes. city planner. Uh, as uh, Mr. Knox indicated, my tenure with the city will be ending like June 15th. A new city plan, a new senior planner is coming on board. Uh, <clears throat> as far as I know, and I know the uh, city manager had talked with uh, the fire department that the city does have a contract with uh, the Kern County Fire Department. The city is paying its fees uh, to the fire department and for we have not received any kind of notice to terminate the agreement. And so from the city manager's standpoint of view, the city does have a fire contract with Kern County Fire. Kern County Fire provides services to the city of Arvin. Uh, the city is not without fire protection. And so uh, I'm not exactly sure what the concern is. I know that <clears throat> the city manager has a an agreement on his desk to present to the city council for uh, entering into a continued agreement with the fire department. However, my understanding is sort of vague is that the county is looking at doing a countywide study on the fire services. And so, and I'm not sure how that impacts the agreement with the city of Arvin in terms of fire protection. Uh, so 
that's what I know and that's what I've been shared, uh, told with, uh, advised by the city manager at this point in time. So if you have any questions, we'd be happy to respond. Any questions from the commissioners? A uh, comment is I, I appreciate the position you're in, Mr. Raper, and I uh, understand completely. We have had facts, let's say, a different set of facts presented to us, excuse me, that uh, give me pause. Let's put it that way. I'm not impugning anyone's integrity. I'm simply sure. saying we've got, um, there's some hair on item B that I would prefer not be there. And so I'm, I'm going to suggest that we bring this back in a month. And I, unfortunately, you may, you may not be here to lace that one up, but. Uh, well, Louise will be here. Okay. <laughs> they, so assuming the commission goes along. Um, yeah. But I, I, I appreciate your comments and uh, I'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. Okay, very sure. good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So the motion is to defer this. I don't know if that's the right word or bring this back in a month, allowing the city and the county time to meet. I think you already voted on that. We did? No. 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 Not on B. Oh, you voted not on, on B. A, but not B. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If that's a motion, I'll second it. Yes, ma'am. Fowler. Thank you. Now, are we voting on delaying? One month. Yes, sir. To bring B. item B back to the commission B. in a month. Okay. Yes. Please cast your votes. Just a point for you. Um, uh, in July, we do not have a meeting scheduled. So if we do not bring it back next month, it'll be August before. Well, let's let's shoot for June and see what we can get done. Thank you. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we're on to um, uh, number C. Um, 1747 Shafter Wasco Irrigation District Spear of Influence Amendment. Um, Mr. Knox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm also going to uh, extend that to 1748, which is Shafter Wasco Irrigation annex Annexation Number 10, and give one report on both, and then come back for a vote, a separate vote on each of the items. Uh, the sphere of influence consideration of the proposed sphere of influence amendment for the uh, Shafter Wasco Irrigation District, including determination as required by Government Code Section 56425E and 56428G, and CEQA uh, is met by a notice of exemption as prepared and adopted by uh, the Irrigation District. The annexation proposal is to annex approximately 10,045 acres encompassing 239 parcels generally north of 7th Standard Road and south of Laredo Highway between North Shafter Avenue and State Highway 43 in Northwest Kern County. The proposal, it, the purpose of the proposal is to help facilitate compliance with Sustainable Groundwater Management Act or SGMA under Water Code Section 10720 for, this, for the affected lands. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has been notified that notice hearing and protest hearing uh, will be required by government code section 56663. Uh, I wanna point out that the report and recommendation mistakenly includes references to the city of Arvin in several places. Uh, please disregard those code sections. They don't, don't belong there. I was working on too many report and recommendations on my desktop at the same time and made a mistake. Uh, so for this, uh, the, the applicant has signed an indemnification agreement. Uh, for taxation, the management of the proposed area is required a new fee schedule for properties in the area. This, the applicant has requested that a condition be placed requiring the annexation will not be complete without a successful Prop 218 hearing. As far as zoning, the proposal does not convert any prime agricultural lands as defined by co government code section 56016. Any commercial agricultural commodities contained in the annexation will continue to be produced with no changes to production or operations. There are several Williamson Act agreements within this annexation. There is no intent to cancel these contracts. 
Uh, this uh, application is consistent with general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plans, is consistent with commission policies. Uh, the boundary of the proposed annexation conforms to the assessor's parcels. There is no functional overlap. Uh, the need to study an adequate water supply is not necessary because the, there is not a plan to provide water to these areas. It's just to manage their sigma requirements. Their, their paper requirements. Uh, affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. No comments were provided. We received a letter of opposition from a law firm representing a property owner. Uh, that letter was provided to you by email and additionally uh, should be here on the dais for you tonight. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. Applicant has been notice, noticed, notified that notice hearing and protest hearing will not be waived. If approved, the proposal is subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Um, and that one of that condition is that the applicant has signed an identification agreement and the applicant has requested as a condition of a Prop 218 election take place and the property owners and voters agree to a new fee for service before annexation is complete. So with that, there's two votes to be taken. One is on the sphere of influence amendment, and my recommendation is consider an environmental impact report, approve the sphere of influence conditional on the approval of annexation number 10. And second, my recommendation on the annexation is to recommend that the commission adopt by resolution the proposed annexation, consider the environmental doc document adopted by the applicant, do not waive notice hearing and protest hearing, Set conditions as recommended by the executive officer and approve annexation number 1748. Is there any public comment uh, to 1747 or 1748? Commissioners, mm -hmm. do you uh, have any comments? Yes, Commissioner Fowler. I have a question for Mr. Knox of the letter of objection we received from the law firm on the annexation. Have you been in discussion with those parties to understand more clearly what their objection is? Was it clear from the letter? Correct, the letter uh, references referenced a taking by the county, which does not ex exist in this case. Um, I not only provide you the letter, I provide the letter to the Chapter Wasco Irrigation District and their attorney reached out to the, the attorney on the letter and has been corresponding with him, trying to educate him on uh, the property owner on what exactly is taking place here. So that conversation is happening. No further comments. Uh, do I have a motion for uh, 1747? Motion to approve, Fowler. Second, couch. Motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Couch. Uh, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we're now going to um, I need a motion for 1748, uh, the uh, annexation number 10. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to approve, Fowler. Second, Second Couch. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. We're now to agenda number 7A, uh, 1750 Lamont Public Utilities District Annexation number 31. Mr. Knox. Yes. This proposal is to annex appro approximately 19.58 acres generally located along the east side of Wheat Patch Highway, approximately 2,040 feet south of Buena Vista Boulevard. The district will provide water service to the existing improvements. The the purpose of the annexation is to provide water to the property. Uh, the Lamont Public Utilities District has signed an identification agreement. There is no tax increase uh, associated with this annexation. Agriculture, uh, 
The property is zoned agricultural and will remain agricultural. Uh, it's consistent with general plans, regional transportation plan, or specific plans. It's consistent with uh, commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. It conforms to assessor's parcels. There is no functional overlap. There is adequate water supply. Uh, this project increases water distribution from the district, but replaces one groundwater water source with another. Uh, CEQA is handled by notice of exemption adopted by the applicant. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg has been followed, including notice to affected agencies and, and any notice and publications required by law. The annexation to the district has 100% landowner consent. The district uh, requests that notice hearing and protest uh, hearing be waived. And it is my recommendation that the commission adopt by resolution the proposed annexation, consider the environmental doc document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1750. Is there any public comment? If not, commissioners? I'll move approval. Second. We have a uh, motion and a second um, by Mr. Couch and the Mr. new commissioner. Paul. Uh, please cast your votes. Motion approved. All ayes. Okay, we're now to number eight, general business. A, approval of, of claims list number 19-05. Do I have a motion? Motion. Approval. Second couch. Uh, motion by Fowler, second by uh, Commissioner Couch. Um, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. 8B, legislative update, uh, Mr. Knox. Yeah, we had one piece of legislation that we opposed. Uh, I provided a copy of that uh, opposition letter in your packet. Uh, this is actually a, the same piece of legislation we opposed last year. Uh, so it wasn't very difficult to make a determination that we should oppose it again this year. Uh, yeah, it's a, not a difficult piece. Okay, no further discussion on that. That was for information only. Um, 8C, office lease update, uh, Mr. Knox. Yeah, our office lease uh, expires here at Bay. Uh, I have been in negotiations with the current uh, property management to uh, have a lease for additional five years. I've also looked at additional properties. Right now, the to have a decent location like we have uh, and at the price we have, it's difficult to beat where our current location. Our office was originally, I believe, a dentist office back in the 1970s and still looks like a 1970s de um, dentist office. Uh, uh, the last bit of information I got from them is that the property owners have agreed to uh, put up a certain amount of funds towards improvements to the inside of our office space. New carpet, new paint, uh, new flooring, uh, new cabinets, uh, several several good items that we're gonna need to uh, stay in it. So uh, unless the negotiations go sideways, I think we're gonna continue to be in the same location for the next five years. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Um, 8D, executive officer miscellaneous items, Mr. Knox. Yeah, I just wanna point out that the Cal AFCO conference that several of you attend every year uh, is coming up November, I mean, October 30th through November 1st. This time it is in Sacramento. Uh, it is not si time to sign up yet, but if you would like to attend, you might place this on your calendars uh, just to make sure that you don't uh, overlap with other scheduling items. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, June 26, 5 p.m. here at the Board of Super Supervisor Chambers. I was going to announce that we didn't have any items on the next month's agenda, but that has now changed. 
since we continued Arvin. Uh, so we will be back uh, in November. And just a reminder again, in July, we will be off uh, as regularly scheduled off in July and back in August. Uh, so see you again here uh, next month. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, number nine, closed session. There is none. We are adjourned.